opening up God's word in scripture. And I also want to worship and glorify God by just recognizing what he's doing uh, in our church body. Uh, many of you have made decisions the last couple weeks to transfer your membership or to get baptized, and we celebrate that with you, and we give all the glory to God. Uh, we welcome you to the Fern Creek family, uh, but even bigger than that, we welcome you into God's family as brothers and sisters in Christ, and so there's so much reason to celebrate, and uh, just in my realm of, of things I see, uh, worship in young adults, God, God is really moving. And uh, it's been a joy to, to start this young adult ministry that's been meeting at church. Uh, 18 to 25 year olds and young marrieds are part of that as well. And uh, we have a young marrieds group meeting at, our, meeting at our house tomorrow night. That's really exciting. We had an all guys uh, group uh, meet a Monday night at Schuyler Whistler's house. That was awesome, full of great discussion. Uh, things like predestination, free will, uh, including uh, reading John 1 together uh, and discussing about how Jesus is the Word of God. Just really, really cool things uh, happening. We have a girls group meeting Saturday, either uh, this Saturday at Christina Beckham's house. Uh, that's reason to celebrate. Uh, young adults are following Jesus, and we're following Jesus together. And uh, it's a great, great thing. And we met Sunday night. We had dinner. We had dip night. Uh, lots of folks made uh, dips and brought in some, some chips, and we uh, ate together, and we studied uh, this uh, Matthew 6 uh, in the book of Matthew. Uh, Jesus, he's been teaching on a whole lot of things. Uh, he's been teaching about marriage, uh, divorce, adultery, salt and light, storing your treasures in heaven, all these things as part of the Sermon on the Mount. He had such a large large crowd, uh, including his disciples. He, he took them up on a mountain, and uh, prob probably so people could see him, right? Such a large crowd. Jesus needed to stand a little higher so people could see him. And as part of uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus uh, talks about worry and anxiety. And I, I'm just thinking here, our generation, my generation of, of young adults, I uh, think about high school and middle school students uh, who have recently gone through COVID. Uh, they, they've experienced racial tension in, their, in this country. Uh, we've experienced uh, worry about, yeah, health and COVID. Uh, our economy is, is suffering and there's, uh, there are families at unrest and in financial discord. There's so many reasons to worry. But Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, do not worry. And he tells us why. He says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? It's a really powerful thought. He goes on to say, why do you worry about clothes? And think about Jesus' teaching in nature. He probably looks next to him and he he sees the the flowers of the field and he says look how they grow they do not labor or spin he says don't worry saying what shall we eat or what shall uh, we wear what shall we drink he says for the pagans unbelievers run after these things and your heavenly father knows you need them and Jesus's advice is to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well so i just wanted to talk uh, about that uh, just just a little bit uh, unpack that in matthew 6 this idea of not worrying and, uh, I, I spent some time uh, before talking to young adults on sunday night uh, just reflecting on things i worry about uh, i worry i'll Never make enough money to provide uh, for the family Annika and I want. We want to have kids. We want to adopt kids. We want to bless uh, these kids. We want to uh, be fruitful and multiply and welcome people into our family. And I worry that, uh, yeah, just about money. How, 
How will I ever provide for that? I worry I'll never be a good enough leader or biblical scholar to be able to lead my own church one day. My dream of being a lead pastor, I'm worried about it. I worry about time management, uh, I'm teaching part-time, worship, uh, young adults. I want to go to seminary school here in the fall. Uh, also, I'm a husband, and that's the priority. And uh, I worry about time management all the time. And uh, worry, it, it, it's almost like w when I leave for the day, I go off the checklist, phone, wallet, keys, worry. It just comes with me wherever I go. And as I reflected on, on Matthew 6 and, and Jesus' advice to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, one word that strikes me in that is kingdom. The word kingdom implies that there's a king. And when there's a king, it takes a burden, it takes worry off of us because we trust the one who is in charge of our circumstances, of our fate. God is in control. And worry, worry really is a sin because it involves being distrustful of God's provision and protection for those who follow him. And so, just acknowledging that we are part of the kingdom of God, it implies that there's a king who is in control and who is over all things. May that thought bless you today. And the other thought of that seek first his kingdom and his righteousness is the word first. That before we give in to worry, before we look at our to-do lists for the day and feel anxiety, what does it mean to seek God first, to pray when you get up in the morning before you look at your phone, to read scripture before you look at Facebook and Instagram, to, to listen to a worship song, to fill yourself with the presence of God and the Spirit of God before you get ready for work. What does it mean in your life to seek God first? first, to make him the priority of your day, not the thing you have to do in the middle of your day, but to make him the priority of your walk with God, to seek God first. And I just want to encourage you with one more thought. See, yes, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, but I also want to encourage you. I remember as a kid thinking about opposite day. Man, opposite day used to be lit as a kid, right? Man, you would go around telling people that you hated them, uh, but that really meant that you loved them, right? It was so much fun. And, and, and I think about opposite day, and I like to think in terms of opposites. What is the opposite of worry? If Jesus is going to tell me not to worry, what is the opposite of that? What am I supposed to feel? And I, I want to challenge you. I don't think the opposite of worry is peace. I think the opposite of worry is submission. We look at Proverbs 3, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, what is the word? Submit to God. He will make your path straight. I just want to encourage you, if there's something burning burdening your heart this morning, if there's something you're worried about, if you feel anxiety over a situation, a relationship, a financial burden, give it to God today because God can not only handle it, he wants to handle it. First Peter 5 tells us we can cast all our anxieties upon God because he cares for us. And so, man, when you begin to feel worry, that is when you should begin to submit your life, your circumstance, yourself, your heart over to God because He cares for you desperately. And God wants you to walk with Him, not in fear or in worry, but in submission. And because you are walking with the Father and the Father is walking with you, you feel what Paul says in Philippians 4, this peace beyond all understanding. And God is on the move here at Fern Creek. Let us know how we can be praying for you. Um, let me pray for us and, and, and pray for you on this Wednesday morning. God, thanks for our church family. 
Thanks for all the brothers and sisters in Christ. You continue to add to our number daily. Lord, I thank you for the leadership here at Fern Creek. I thank you for this staff who is working hard to continue to make room for you and to follow your mission to make disciples who make disciples. And Lord, I pray this is a place where that happens. And the disciples of you are made here. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, we're in for a good day on Sunday. We're talking about Matthew chapter 8. Jesus calms a storm. Even the winds and the waves obey him. We're really excited to worship together and continue to learn about who Jesus is together on Sunday morning. 9, 10, 15, 11, 30. We hope to see you. There's a donut and a warm cup of coffee waiting for you. Grace, peace. We'll see you Sunday, church.